Everyone here wants to become a better jungler, and you know what makes someone really good at something? A deep understanding of the junglers they're playing and the junglers they're facing. And so in this video, we will look at the best champions, the best junglers that you can use to become a better jungler, to become a well-rounded player, by picking junglers that basically cover every single one of the topics you see on your screen now. If you play a couple of games of each of these champions, and you were able to sort of understand exactly what's required for them to win, how they play, what their clears feel like, what the game states feel like with them in it, you will have a much better understanding when you have your core champion pool of what it takes, and all of these champions will give you a transfer of skills amongst each other and into your general jungling, so no matter what you play, you have a better understanding of each of these core principles. And as you begin your journey or continue your journey on becoming a better jungler, let Mobilitics' new companion app join you on that ride. It will give you all of the information you need before, during, and after game. Not only gives you tips about your matchup, but also gives you tips and tricks about the champions you're facing on the enemy team and the champions on your team so you can better assess the win conditions necessary for you to climb. The overlay also gives you gold lead, your CS per minute so you can track your targets, your gold per minute so you can make sure you're snowballing appropriately, as well as your kill participation so that you can stay active on the map. The power spike notifications will allow you to keep track of the crucial items that will counter you or basically not do anything against you, and also let you know when ultimates are available so that you can make the right counter map plays Along with the post-game stats so you can study your victory to replicate it as much as possible, the Mobilitics Companion app has everything you need to climb in Season 13. Okay, first off, I'd like to start off with a meta jungler. Last year we did Diana and everyone groaned and said, oh, Diana, and I agree with you, oh, Diana. This year you're gonna do the same thing, it's Udyr. Now before you say, oh dear, and skip to the next section, why would I recommend you to play this absolute abomination of a champion? Because I also did it because I wanted to see what it feels like to be ethically compromised. Mostly because I wanted to see what the Q felt like on a solo target stud, and it made me realize that all my champions absolutely suck. Hey, I can be good at it, I can be efficient at it, I can reverse clear until the cows come home over the moon, but I will not be able to full clear as fast as Udyr, half chunking a buff with one ability. What it will teach you though is the ability to understand what makes a champion meta, the speed with which they clear, jewel, do objectives, move around the map, scale, team fight. It gives you everything as a baseline of, hey, this is the measuring stick of the meta. When you play a champion, even a lower base down champion who's still meta, still strong, just not quite as, say, Udi is strong, you will understand the power that you're against and what you have to do to overcome it. It's very much a case of keep your enemies closer so you can understand them better. I think that's how it went, right? But additionally, Udyr also allows you to diversify your team fighting mechanics by understanding certain aspects of enemy team comms. You've got your R Phoenix for the percentage max HP burn and slow. You've got your immovable, unstoppable E when you use the Awaken with it. You've got your healing and sustain through your W when you just want to survive. And of course, you've got your tank killer, solo killer shredder, percentage max HP broken, Awaken Q. So the champion gives you a lot of diverse things for you to implement into your own jungling by saying, hey, I've learned now how fast a clear is from a meta champion. What can I do to play against this when I'm playing something that's slower? What can I do against this kind of power that allows me to still be stronger than them? They also have tanky builds where they can't be killed and they still do damage. They have squishy builds where they one-shot you, but now they can actually be killed. And understanding this power curve is very important in terms of understanding the meta you face. That being said, the fundamental champions that I'm going to use this year are going to be a little bit more different than we've had in the past. First off, let's talk about snowballing champions, assassins, getting ahead, closing games out, leveraging your win conditions into LP gains. And as you can see, we're using Evelyn for this year. Two years ago, we used Viego when he was released because do you guys remember that? It was insane. And then last year, we had Echo because of course, he is also insane. He's still very good, but his win rate actually isn't as potent as it once was, whereas Evelyn's is really good. She's loving season 13 and people are not loving facing her. Ganking meta, just get six and then, you know, sit on their faces. And then if it's a farming meta, you can just sequence, loop around and take control of the business by having an advanced experience in gold lead. What Evelyn teaches us in terms of snowballing and becoming a better jungler is the following. Have you ever been an Evelyn who's fed against an Amumu? I don't know, Janna, Lulu, Caitlyn kind of comp with maybe a Sua Wind Wall, let's say maybe a Maokai top laner or an Orn or something like that. How much fun do you have trying to team fight against that particular comp? Probably not a lot of fun at all. And what that will teach you then is in order to win this game, I need to close the game out before they have any sort of power in that team fight. It's one of the greatest things because I have a lot of points on Evelyn, but I also play a lot of Warwick which means I understand fully how to counter her, and I always do with that champion. The W, the later team fights, I don't really care if she outfarms me. I know I can beat her 1v1, I know I can stick to her, and I know I can easily match up to her well in most scenarios. Why? Because I can itemize against her, and I know she won't be able to close the game. What you will notice, Evelyn, is you don't have the turret hitting ability that most other champions have, so you have to really focus on exerting map pressure that allows turrets to be taken with your team, so you have to understand tracking enemy jungler. Shutting down numbers advantages so that you always have the ability to take towers. Shadowing and killing prior targets 
so that they can never play the game. Also, vision pathing, while not really an issue because we're camo, it does mean that a control ward makes you kind of useless. And obviously because it takes you about 10 years to clear it and you are quite vulnerable when you're seen, it makes you kind of think differently about where you're going to path around the edges and how you will keep having to try find those team fighting angles such that you can close by 2025. And even if late games go to fun time 40 kills, you don't want that, right? And that's the same with any snowballing and assassin based jungler. You have to understand your game plan to get fed in the first place. You have to understand how to control that lead as much as possible. And then you have to understand how to use that lead to actually end. Now, if we're talking about raw fundamentals, right? What's a great jungler that gives me baseline ganking cadence, baseline farming cadence, you know, looking at quadrants, strong team fight ability, gives me some outplay potential mechanically, and also allows me to bait enemy teams and give them some elements of surprise through my kit that they might not be able to use because they don't understand it, but I do. What I'm going to give you this season, my friends, is Wukong. Really has a decent play rate actually at the moment, but he has an even better win rate. And what he teaches you is about using your very specific map scaling in the right way. It's got a high cooldown. You can't just run around like Kane. You can't just Kindred Wall hop over the place and have resets on that. You have to play it appropriately. You have to know exactly when you're going to use your entry point, either into the gang or over the wall to get around vision. It makes you think a bit about your vision pathing. Not only that, he's really strong early, has great versatility in terms of his first clears. Atomization somewhat static, but that's absolutely fine. We have our Q, which has that armor penetration, as well as the fact that more bonks equals that cooldown goes down. So that's great. People don't really realize that when it comes to the Q. And then, of course, you have your clone trickery whereby you can absorb spells crucial spells that keep you alive as you remove yourself and disengage from a situation he has mind games he has ganking farming because you've got to keep them both up you can buy tiamat and be a bit more of a farmer you can be a bit more of a ganker but having that fusion of style is so good for those junglers who really want to understand how to balance ganking and farming tiamat can help you don't need it but it can help likewise when it comes to mid and late game team fights he is there he is present and he is ready to fling some feces and spin all over whoever needs to be spun on and basically, the champion gives you a lot of windows into understanding jungle as a baseline role through multiple avenues, multiple wing cons. Because while he doesn't scale so good, he does snowball quite well. And even if he does fall a bit behind through itemization and good entry points, you can still dominate those fights. But what if you just wanted to have a little bit more fun in terms of map rotations, but you also didn't really want to do anything else other than farm. You wanted to play around your ultimate, you wanted to relax, put some tool on in the background, sequence a bit, gank after the sequence, gank a bit before the sequence, take a dragon, take a herald. That's right, we're going to go with Hecarim this season. Two years ago, Fiddlesticks. Last year, Lilia. This year, basically everyone's going, who is Lilia again? And I could put Fiddlesticks and I should put Fiddlesticks, but I think Hecarim's an easy one because it teaches you a lot more about this kind of meta, rotating to fights, getting to fights while still farming your full sequence. Because if you don't do that, you're useless. If you don't do that, you don't scale. And if you don't do that, you don't have your ultimate. And you need to know how to play around your ultimate as soon as it's up or trying to use it. What he also teaches you now is the ability to understand different itemization spikes for your own damage and survivability threshold. By that, I mean, you can go assassin and one shot people, but you'll die if you play badly. Or you can go a bit more tanky and resistance based, focus on your cooldowns, don't kill people one shot, but through sustained fighting and good positioning, you can win every fight. The yes is win rate data does look a little bit low. You might think, wow, why are you recommending this? Well, that's because we're about to enter a more farming based meta with more experience, with more gold, with more farming, with more rotations, with more level six spiking. You following? This champion's going to do a lot of good. If you want to understand farming junglers, use Hecarim, understand how to play around ultimates, and you will translate this to any jungler that wants to do the same. For the early ganking junglers who want to really go dunking, we have to recommend Jovan, don't we? Because he's just the strongest at that right now. Last year, we recommended Shin Shao because he was actually pretty good then. Now he's trash. Two years ago, we recommended Elise. And again, she wasn't so good, but she was fine. Now she's just been giga giga strong. And when I was making this concept video, I was going to use her and then Riot decided to, you know, nerf that. But Jovan's a great one because you still learn early pressure. You have fullback potential for your clears. You know how to dive because you have to know how to dive. And obviously you have a lockdown ultimate for your level six spike to ensure that the laners you're already ganked and burnt flashes on get dunked for free. See, that's what we're trying to do with a ganking jungler. Gank a lane, get sums, get kills, but we're setting it up to do it again and again. And Jovan with his guaranteed CC in terms of EQ flash combos, with his guaranteed CC in terms of the crater that killed the dinosaurs, and with shoulder pads so strong they could probably knock down a Greek column, you know he's probably going to have a good time early ganking and of course snowballing and winning early. What these champions teach you is agency. Get on the map, early invades, early ganks, control the enemy jungler, denial them, spam gank a lane and get them fed, know which lane you're going to support from win conditions and champ select and then do it. Commit to it and do it. And if you don't, you're going to fall behind to the farmers like the Hecarim and if you don't do it correctly, the Evelyn's going to eventually catch up and outpace you and then shut you down. So you have to really understand that ganking agency on the map even when it's not a ganking meta, as we're about to enter into, ganking champions like Rek'Sai, like Elise, like Jovan, always have a place 
and they will always be great for those junglers looking to get the D2 Master Plus. The sort of tilt gank component onto laners beneath those ranks is just so free, you might as well do it. For a more juicy taste on fundamentals, we are going to give another champion in a second, but first we need to talk about Kane because his team comps, win condition, and flexible atomization, yeah, that's absolutely incredible. I love recommending Kane as a champion for people to get better. People always say, but he's a rule breaker. His E is disgusting. His forms are unnatural. And I say yes to all of those things, but... You have to understand the champ select, like which form you're going, which hybrid build are you going if you're going in between. You know, your slayers, your purples, your blueses. But then you also have to understand the itemization and why you're going it. It gives you a full on drop in the deep end lesson on form, assassins, fighters, itemizations, and understanding win conditions of the enemy team, their team composition, and the win conditions on your team. You need to disrupt, disengage, and peel a bit because they've got a whole bunch of assassins, all melee. Hey, Ross is great for the backline W gaming. Hey, they got a whole bunch of tanks and fighters who are stacking HP. I'm going to basically never die one shot. Hey, Ross is still here, but they all have squishies. They have enchanters, they have ADCs. They have champions you can just one shot and take over and control and basically kill on loop while still split pushing and rotating to other situations. Shadow Assassin is ready to go. Hey, you think you can kill them, but you need a bit more survivability because they have high damage too. Let's go Shadow Assassin and build a Gore Drinker maybe. There have been so many permutations and combinations with Ra, Shadow Assassin, and Kane. I don't even think there's only three people in there anymore, probably more like 300, that are trying to figure out which is the best way to play the champion in each given game. It gives one tricks a sense of fulfillment, but also teaches non-Kane junglers about how to think about the game differently. Think about enemy comps and your comps differently. And when you translate that to whatever your champion pool is, all of a sudden you're realizing that your own dynamic itemization is taking off. You're understanding your roles in team fights and team comps is changing. It makes you a better player because you have to think differently. That's always good. Changes in perspective are always good. Most people don't really think about Warwick in this way, but you really should think about Warwick in this way. Low skill floor, high skill ceiling. The ability to turn and stick to fights with his healing passive is one of the greatest things about this champion because enemy champions don't know or think about those things at all. You are always thinking about your sustain, your turn ability, your spell cooldowns, and that's huge for any PvP on any champion. Anytime you 1v1 anyone in lane and jungle and rivers and gangs, you're always thinking about their cooldowns, your cooldowns, and what their champions can do and what your champions can do. Warwick players are conditioned to do this because we usually get low, we want to get low, when we have to play perfectly with our auto attacks, knowing what to hit, when to prime our E, when to use our Q, and always when to bait it out, say, oh no, you're going to kill me, and then turn and bite their head off. That understanding of body language, misdirected intent, 1v1 potential, this is crucial for any champion that you ever play. Not only that, he also allows you to rotate and understand rotations at a very basic level. He lets you understand engage and disruptions. It's very easy to go really, really fast, engage, and realize your team is nowhere behind you and you die. So you have to look at those windows of opportunity about when do I make a pick, when do I engage, when do I just use my peel, and all of these things flow together to make a really great basic package that can easily still get you to master tier and has the benefit of being able to be in top lane, where he's probably more so in high elo than a jungler, but you get the point. Now, when it comes to macro and split pushing, I could have put Nocturne like last year, and in fact, I will still mention Nocturne as the honorable mention, but this year I want to talk about Balveth, because it's very, very easy to say, hey, split push the side lane, then ult in. That's a bit of a cop out. What if you're playing any other champion in the game? What do you learn from that? Oh, I don't have a global ultimate. And while Balveth can split push fast, well, that's an understatement. Faster than anybody with avoid fishies from the Herald and Baron Coral pickup, it also lets you understand the rapid nature of split push pressure and rotations, and also when to basically ditch and rotate in or when to stay and kill. And even though she's the extremely great example of this, it can be used in basically any jungler situation. You can always push and cut in most elos, especially if you don't want to straight up team fight. And what that allows you to do when you understand that pressure release is all of a sudden, hey, now I have control over the map. I can see how the behavior moves and evolves and changes. When I'm playing any other champion that can split push, I can do the same thing. Albeit split push slower, I can still observe and understand the patterns. And Belveth allows you to get away with it a bit more, so you get to learn it a bit quicker. And finally, if you want to play a more tanky style, which is focused on engaging and peeling, maybe a little bit low econ and a bit supportive, we are going to go with Zack. Now, obviously, Zack is going to be the super tank. He does too much damage, but as easy as it is for you to E long range bomb the Jinx from the enemy team, you didn't do your job, which was peel your Jinx from the enemy Rengar and your Soraka from the enemy Echo. So what good is it if you're killing the Jinx if your whole team is dead? It will teach you restraint about engage, I can tell you that much, but it'll also teach you maximum about disruption, tanky survivability, using your passive and your healing, micromanaging yourself in team fights while micromanaging your own damn team. That sounds like one of the best ways to learn how to play a tank. When you have all of the control and you can actually straight up say with great power comes great responsibility. 
And most Zack players get carried away, and I know you're kind of strong at the moment, but when you get nerfed and you're just like the rest of us tanks, these are all the things that every tank has to think about. Target swap in fights, heal in fights, engage in fights, sustain yourself in fights, in and out yourself in fights. It's really one of the most difficult roles to play in team fights because you have so much responsibility that no one realizes, respects, or will ever thank you for. But he still is one of the best at letting you learn this. I know this because I first ever reached Diamond way back season 4, season 5 when I first started playing with Zack in the jungle, so I learned the hard way as well. This was before the reworks, rework, rework, whenever that was. But I also used my Rengar jungle and my Malphite support. That's right, it was off meta back then and I'm still off meta now. Thank you very much for watching. These best junglers will allow you to become a better jungler and a better player. These champions will give you diverse understanding of the different roles within and the different ways to win. Don't forget to head to Vrkai.gg for your free improvement worksheet. You can download that just by entering your email address. It will be delivered to you. And if you want to really understand the nature of being, what is jungle at its core? What is jungle diff? Click the video in the box in the top right.